On top of the homework, we're going to have the self-paced modules that I talked about, the asynchronous modules through PlayPosit. That'll be Monday, Wednesday. That being said, you could work on them Monday night at 10 o'clock, Monday night at midnight, Tuesday at 1135 after class. You can work on these anytime throughout the week that you'd like. Um, so I'm going to take the normal lecture material, break it up into smaller modules so that we can work through that at a different pace. Um, and I embed questions in those. And what's nice about the play posit material is that I will record the answer to each of those questions. If you get the question correct, it'll jump you ahead to the next material. If you get the question incorrect, it'll walk you through the solution to that material. So you should be able to get help right away or help identifying what you do and don't know and then getting help um, on that material from that. So here's what those modules will look like. I don't have one available for you yet. So I'm working on it, but it will be available shortly. Um, so this is our Blackboard course right here. I'm going to have a folder for each week. There'll be lecture material in each folder, as well as these play posit material. So the play posit is this blue light bulb. You click on that, it'll take you to the module. You can work through that module. You can work through it multiple times. Um, you can start, stop the module. You don't have to finish it in one setting. Um, and all of that material week by week will be posted here. The course documents, I've got our syllabus posted there, and I've got a, an outline for how to use or how to access the homework platform as well. All right, two exams, 40 questions each. They're about 40% of the course grade, you know, 100 points for each exam. They're going to, the questions will come from lecture material, some of the problem sets, the, the homework that we're doing, um, some of the problems that we do in class, right, the play posit material. Mostly be multiple choice. Maybe I'll do some short answer questions. Um, and those two exams, the midterm is June 8th and the final exam is June 29th, right? And for all of those of us that are worried about the exams, um, right, here's day one, going through the syllabus, the first few weeks. In the summer though, the first two weeks is like the first half of the class, exam day, everyone gets nervous, but really, um, like I said, it'll be similar to the problems we see in class, the homework material, the practice exams will all help get you prepared for those exams. The last component uh, that I really like to do is this chemistry in your life. And I realize that not everyone in the class is a chemistry major like myself. I, I realize some of you are taking this as a prerequisite. Some of you just need a general science requirement. And that's why I really like this assignment because this assignment lets you see that really chemistry is all around us, right? Chemistry is in everything we do from the food we eat, the water, right? The quality of the water that we drink, the quality of the air we breathe, what chemicals are in that water or in our food, uh, the chemistry of modern materials. So lithium ion battery in our cell phone, uh, the screen, right? The screen in our cell phone, um, our devices, right? Chemistry is everywhere. And so I just want you to find chemistry in something that you enjoy. It could be a hobby, it could be a major, it could be something you do outside of class. Um, so I want you to find chemistry in something that you enjoy doing and just do a one page PowerPoint slide about that as kind of an infographic. And as an example, we'll just take a look at some of the other infographics um, that are available. So here's an example of what I'm talking about for these infographics. They're really cool. Um, so here could be an example of one of these infographics. We'll do aroma chemistry, sure. Chemistry of cat, catnip, allergies. All right, okay, here's a good example. The chemistry of lavender. Maybe you really enjoy the aroma of lavender. We could break down what are the chemical composition of lavender that gives it that aroma of lavender. So what are some of the molecules? What do they look like? Their stereochemistry, what, what attribute um, can we give to those molecules, right? 
Oh, the chemistry of the corpse flower. So that doesn't smell very good, but here's an example. We could talk about the flower. We could talk about the structure of that flower and then some of the chemicals that are given off by that flower that gives it the not so pleasant smell. Maybe aroma chemistry wasn't the best example to work through. Um, what else do we have here? The chemistry of old books chemistry of roses. These are a little bit simpler than I was hoping. Here's an example, yeah, of, of something that's kind of gone a little bit more in depth than what I'd be looking for for um, this assignment. And please don't just copy one of these that are already available. Um, so the color of roses, we can talk about that molecule, how it gives it this bright red color. Um, and it's this long conjugation. So we can talk about where that color comes from, like what part of the molecule. So this large degree of conjugation of all these double bonds that we're looking at here are what helps gives us that part of the molecule that absorbs the light, it gives it red. Um, we can also talk about these two molecules that are pigment, uh, they're, so they're carotenoids, it help gives us pigment, pigment. Um, the aroma as well, so the molecules that give us the aroma of a rose. Ooh, freshly baked bread, that would be a good one. So as you can see, I want a little bit of chemistry and I want a little bit something else. Um, associated with it of, of why did you pick this topic? Why is it of interest to you? And then what is the chemistry in this topic um, as it relates to something we've talked about in class? So there are hundreds of examples on this page. Um, I just want you to find one that you find interesting. Um, and we could do another example. pH scale. All right, so that's 10% of your course grade. That'll be due at the end of the semester, and I will provide a rubric as well for this assignment. Um, here's one of the examples that I pulled out from that same website. So the chemistry of nail polish, right? Again, we can kind of get into the, the UV, um, the gel type nail polishes, they have this UV initiator that helps initiate the polymerization to make that really strong nail polish. We have some solvents that are car they're carrier solvents, they evaporate, so they help you spread the material, but then when it evaporates, right, it leaves the color behind. Um, and we can talk about the different colors, where that comes from, the pigments um, of those nail polishes as well. So just an example, of one of those infographics that I was talking about. Right, other than that, here's our general overview, two exams, 40% of your grade, the homework, which is 150 points, 30% of your grade, that's nine homework assignments, two practice exams, play posit participation is um, 100 points or 20% of your grade. And then that, that infographic, that poster that I talked about um, is 50 points or 10% of your course grade. Total, 500 points for the semester, right? And so just as an example, uh, grade breakdown, let's say you get an 88 on exam one, a 72 on exam two, you get 130 of 150 homework points, um, you do an 86 on play posit, and a 45 out of 50 on the chemistry in your life. We add those five scores up and those five scores bring us to 421 points that would give you a B plus in the course because you've got greater than, um, oh, actually it would give you a B in the course because a B plus would be greater than uh, 425 and we're 421. So we'd be just under that. We'd have a B um, for the course. Uh, 440 and above would be an A minus, 450 and above would be an A. So that was my mistake here. Uh, 421 points should be a B. I should be a little bit closer, more pay more close attention when I update material. Um, Chem 107, that's with Gary. If you've got any emails or questions about Chem 107, ask Gary. I don't know the structure. Um, you know, he runs that course. I run this course. You have to take both of them, and unless you've got special circumstances, um, but he's much better to ask or questions about Chem 107. Other than that. Please let me know if you've got any questions um, on the material. Happy to answer those via email or if you want to wait until we have class in person on Tuesday, that's fine too. All right, looking forward to seeing everyone on Tuesday.